I'm Basic Becca, and you're listening to the Three Count Podcast. I knew that she raised one. I come. All of your hate. I come. Won't change none. I come. Who you think you are? Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. I do all of these interviews. I've been on every single one of these. This is, this is ridiculous. I have, to, I have to find a secretary. Someone else got to do these takeovers. Anyway, let's go down our roster. This man here, he's been my longest friend. He's the one dude that can literally call me on all my bullshit, and the only thing I'll do is – throw him a middle finger because he's usually right but it is what it is he's the man who has a ged that means good enough degree so give it up for the man <laughs> lou the franchise i thought i was your secretary dickhead <laughs> oh that's right you are my secretary i forgot about that <laughs> so now i am the host of this show <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Three Count Presents Now Entering the Ring, which means one thing. We have a special guest for you. You can find this man on CCW. You can find this man on DWO. You can find this man on CWFAZ. You can find this man in WWE, 205 Live to be exact. You can find this man on FCW and AWF. He is the Fink Sinatra of the Spanish Mafia. He is the Latino Al Pacino. Give it up for Gino Rivera. What's up? What's up, guys? What's going on? Yo. Hey, thank you, like, just for taking some time out and talking to us, man. First of all, that was a great introduction. That was, that was fine. That was fabulous. I love it. I got I to, gotta, you know, take some notes, you know what I mean? And I'm going to probably introduce myself like that when I take the mic from an announcer. <laughs> I also did forget that yes. you're a two-time DWO full access champion. I did miss that yes. part. Yes. Oh, my God. God. I got too many accolades, man. You know what I mean? I... Uh, I'm glad you have notes because I don't have it in front of me. But yeah, <laughs> that's that's me. That's the number one thing. Like I always tell people, I was like, "Hey, man, if you're gonna interview anybody, research." <laughs> yeah. Yes, and you know what? I always have everything documented, and there you go, man. No, you know? well, so this is just our our podcast, man. It's with, like I was telling you before we started recording, it's a podcast about wrestling for wrestlers by wrestlers. So really, it's just kind of the thing. But the first question that I'm going to hit you with before we get into really everything, who is Gino Rivera? All right. Well, Gino Rivera is a loudmouth Puerto Rican. Gino Rivera is a loudmouth Puerto Rican from the Bronx who's met, you know, a lot of bad obstacles in his life, who's gone through a lot. And the only way to express himself was through fighting. And through fighting in life just made him just one complete badass with little man syndrome, right? And um, he's a Puerto Rican pit bull. That's what they call him. You know what I mean? That's the guy. And uh, he gets all of his aggression out by running his mouth because that's what Spanish people do. That's what Puerto Ricans do. We run our mouth to, you know, if you've ever sat down and, and had a conversation with a Puerto Rican, we will talk you to death. And that is exactly who Gino Rivera is. He runs his mouth, runs his mouth, and he backs up everything he says and, you know, gets whatever he wants in life. So Gino Rivera went through a, a whole lot of things, you know, as far as like deaths and, and, and being broke and, you know, um, losing his mom and his brother. And just the only way to, uh, to express how he feels is just fighting wrestling in the ring and you know collecting championships collecting victories somehow fill that gap that void that emptiness inside but it's never enough which is why gene river is always still angry still running his mouth and still always saying i told you so because he knew that he was always a star he knew he was always a champion he knew that he was going to get everything he always wanted in life but no one believed him you know so that's why he has that famous I told you so. You can see it right here, right? Gina <laughs> Rivera. So that's who Gina Rivera is. Bet, man. That's awesome. I love the description too, man. That's how it works. As yeah. I'm being interrupted by another visitor. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Hello, visitor. You, you can't hang out with me. That's not how this works. Um, but my big question too, man, is like, what inspired you to get into the business? My, my adopted mother, um, I was given up at the age of two months old, uh, my real mom did not want me. 
Um, she was a 17 year old mom who got pregnant um, and she wanted to live the, you know, the fabulous life and she didn't want to have a kid. And we see that a lot today, but back in the nineties and the eighties, I mean, that was like, it wasn't okay, but she got pregnant. Um, there's a lot of rumors as if she was raped or she was uh, involved in some, some street work where she met a guy she loved had sex with her and, and got her pregnant and left her. And now she's like 17, doesn't know what to do. So um, she went back home and she kind of gave birth to a young Gino and didn't want to be a mom yet. So someone else took over and um, my mom left to the mainland, California, to become a hooker, uh, a street prostitute. And she's done that her whole life. And um, the person that took care of me, uh, my adopted mom, had five boys of her own. And she's like, I, I, I have baby fever. Like, I love kids. I'll take, I'll take that kid. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll raise them. You know what I mean? No paperwork needed. And she, she took me. She raised me. And it just so happened that she was obsessed with wrestling. Wrestling was like her life. You know what I mean? And she loved, you know, like guys like Jimmy Superfly Snuka, Jake. Uh, Jake the Snake, Andre the Giant, and around that time, you know, 1990 and 91, like Undertaker came around. And she was like the biggest Undertaker fan ever, you know, in the WWF at the time. And as you know, you know, you're a kid, you watch what your parents watch, you know what I mean? You're, you, you, you don't really go like, I want to watch this. I mean, my kids do now, but back then, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, well, I guess we're watching the Andy Griffin show or we're watching Sally with Jenny Jones or whatever it is. And that's time when WWF would come on, we'd watch that. And my first memory of a wrestling was seeing like Jake the Snake on TV and stuff like that. And um, just stuff like that. Like I was just a big fan of wrestling. Whenever it came on, I would watch it with my mom. And ever since then, I was just hooked. I was a fan and you could not tell me anything bad or nothing negative about wrestling because I was just hooked from then. <laughs> So you could say, I mean, I was watching wrestling from my mom would tell you like a couple months old, a year old, two years old, you know what I mean? So that's what inspired me to actually watch it, to get into it. Is that what you guys wanted to know? Like what, how did I get into it? Yeah, that's definitely, yeah. I mean. <clears throat> well, I mean eventually, <clears throat> eventually I moved to Los Angeles and from Los Angeles, I went to go see a live show and I was at the Staples Center. I was walking across the street and I kept getting these flyers from random people. Like, they're just giving me these flyers. And I'm like, what the heck is, I don't want to see strippers. What the hell, I'm here to see wrestling. But I didn't really look at the flyer. You know what I mean? Because the flyer was like, do you want to be a pro wrestler? Join Santino Bros Wrestling. And it had all the guys with their shirts off. But I was like, ah, oh, what the hell? I don't want this. I chucked it. Went to my show, came back out. I'm getting all these flyers again. I'm like, you know, and you don't want to be rude. Like, no, you know, you don't, I don't want this flyer. No, I walk past them. I was like, yeah, I'll take it, whatever. Throw it in the trash. I actually looked at it because I'm at a stoplight and I'm like, become a pro wrestler. Like, this is, this is my life. This is what I've wanted forever. You know what I mean? And I was like, the next day, I was like, I'm calling this number. I'm going to go down and I'm going to sign up. You know what I mean? And I met um, XPW, which is like a rival of ECW on the West Coast. Um, they were the hardcore wrestling guys. Guys like Angel Exoticos, um, the late Supreme was my trainer who just passed away, RIP. Um, and also Joey Chaos, who was Kid Chaos um, in XPW. And I saw them and I saw a ring and I was like, this is what I'm doing. Like, I'm so, where do I sign up? How much do I have to pay? Uh, I, I'll pay it. I don't care. This is my dream. You know what I mean? And I got signed up in 2008 and the rest was history from there. I'm curious to ask though, the one show at the Staples Center, was there happened to be a 205 live show then? Was there a 205 like around that time? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Th this was, um, man, this was like, I'd say, oh my gosh. No, 205 live came later. Yeah, it came later. It came way later yeah. only because, so I've heard, okay, so I've heard a story similar, right? Yeah. About a certain wrestler who stopped, right? Because yeah. that's that was his dream to main event at the Staples Center, and yeah. one night he got to main event at the Staples Center. Yeah, uh, he said he remember getting like getting stopped, like people stopped his car in front, and he got out and he was just signing autographs like all day. 
like for the rest of the night and because it was his dream and he yeah. finally got to live his dream out so i was like i was like oh man i was like it'd be so weird if like this story was like crossing that way <laughs> yeah no no not me no i was literally just there and i wanted to be a wrestler i watched them wrestling cheered scream cried whatever it was <laughs> and walked across the street and got those flyers and like i said the next day i hit them up and i was ready i was ready for some action you know what i mean i i didn't know what to expect in life i just knew that you know well if i if i do the school maybe i'll get signed to the wwe i don't know like i didn't know there's a process and how to do things you know but I was there. I was there to stay, you know. Man, aim high. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess, like, the next question I'll have for you is, what do you think is missing from the business? What I think is missing from the, vis- uh, the business is variety. Um, you know, look, man, I- I'm a small guy. I'm a light guy. I'm considered a cruiserweight in a lot of aspects. And um, everybody's just so big and muscular and six foot and 300 pounds and stuff like that. And you know what I mean? And I see a lot of guys and this is no hate to them. It's just, it's something that's been bugging me for my whole life. I'm a, I'm a little guy and I know I got more talent than like a lot of these guys that come in that are all muscular and big and they got sports, sports athletic backgrounds and they graduated from Notre Dame and Florida state and all the stuff. And a guy like me, that's only did a few years in college and graduated high school and, I've loved wrestling my whole life. And this is literally what I've prepared my whole life to be. I get overlooked or passed on because there's some handsome six foot dude here and I'm just standing there. You know what I mean? I have the same thing this guy has. Nice boots, nice gear. I can speak. That guy can. I can wrestle. This guy wants to learn how to do it. Like I have the passion, but this guy's just doing it for 15 minutes of fame or just to say, hey, I did. I work for the WWE. Now I want to be a Hollywood movie star. For me, it's like my whole life has been, I've always just wanted to get to the WWF. Like I've never wanted to be a cop. I never wanted to be a police officer, a fireman or, you know, a mortician, nothing. I've wanted to wrestle my whole life and I've prepared myself where I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I have a clean background record. Like I've held a job since I was 16 and guys like me that really put in the work we just never get that shot that opportunity so variety there's small guys like myself there's um you know 300 pound dudes that don't look like models that are that have the same passion i do that can out wrestle these 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 sports guys or these models you know what i mean and i hate seeing that so i think variety is missing as far as your look like you 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 know back then i grew up on yokozuna and vader and you know what I mean? Just like big, different type of type of guys, like you know, King Mabel. They're all big guys. They didn't have to be like Roman Reigns and you know what I mean, Ta- uh, Tanahashi, all built and John Cena. Like I love seeing now today um, the cruiserweight guys, but we're not we're not featured. We're not big stars. We're just on a separate show. You know what I mean? Like oh, you guys go there. The big guys are on TV. You know what I mean? Like where's where's the cruiserweights on on the show now? Yeah. You don't really see them. You don't see them. They have their own show. That sucks. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I like seeing different varieties of wrestlers and stuff like that. Not everybody has to do the, you know, the big man moves. I like seeing the technical wrestlers. I like seeing the high flyers. You know what I mean? The grapplers. I like seeing all that. And I think variety's missing. So. Yeah, I was. Thinking, I I can agree with that too because I feel like like two hundred five has like their own show, but I feel like NXT really kind of utilizes like all their guys like and, and does a good job of it but you're right when it comes to like mainstream and that same kind of company it's like yeah. six foot like 200 pounds there, like, there's a there is like, there's a cookie cutter like there's a cookie cutter like you know i, I don't know how to really say it but yeah they're they're looking at us for a certain type of guy if you're not that cer- certain type of look like you know it is what it is and and part of me goes you know what i can't i can't focus on that i just got to keep doing me and a lot, of, a lot of advice that I've gotten from uh, uh, the older vets, the veterans around in wrestling is they, they just tell me, keep talking, keep talking. What you lack in size, you have it in your mouth, right? That sounds weird. Uh, what's it called? What you, ha- <laughs> what you lack in body and, you know, like, you know, muscles and genetics, you have it with your mouth. Your mouth is your moneymaker. Never stop talking. And I've been compared to like a light-skinned Leo Rush, and I'm like, that's great, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, every wrestler doesn't 
like to be compared to other wrestlers, but I'll take that. You know what I mean? Bet. I like that. So then I guess my next and last question before I hand this over to Lou is going to be, what advice would you give to up and coming wrestlers? Oh my gosh. So I get this question. Um, I, I get this question a lot and, and I'm going to stick with it because it's, it's the absolute truth. So the, the thing I tell them, I, I have a school here in Albuquerque called Off the Ropes, OTR, and I train about 10 to 12 people. And this, the, the advice I give to them is, look, wrestling is hard, okay? Uh, it's not something you can just come in and, and get down right away. It's hard, and it'll make you quit. You know, it'll make you want to give up. And mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, it's draining. But I say, because it's been said to me, listen to this very close. Do not quit. Stay with it. Stick with it. No matter how hard it gets, stay here. Why you ask is because the day that you leave is the one day that they, whoever they are, big companies, mainstream companies, AEW, Japan, you know, Impact, Mexico, WWE, wherever, the day that you decide to leave could be the day that they were looking for you. Sometimes it's not about who you know or, or size, but sometimes it goes, I need a five foot Puerto Rican, about 165 pounds. I don't care if you speak Spanish. Uh, I just need him uh, for this one episode. Can somebody find me a freaking uh, a midget Puerto Rican for this one episode? And the day I go, you know, guys, I don't have it anymore. I'm just going to, I'm going to quit, man. Um, no one's looking at me. I'm not getting signed. I'm just, I'm just done. See you later, guys. And all of a sudden, hey, you guys see that uh, that one Puerto Rican down in the Southwest? Big mouth guy? Yeah, he still, no, he retired. Oh, all right. Anybody else? That's exactly what will happen. So you can't just quit. You know what I mean? I know guys that are out here 17 years still haven't had their opportunity, their big break, and they refuse to quit because they live by that same model. The day you quit could be the day that someone was looking for you. So stick with it. Stay with it. No matter how hard it gets, stick with it, man. Like injuries, it'll drain your pockets. It'll, it'll, it'll do some damage on your car, your body. Stay with it. I've been in here for 11 years, and trust me, I thought about two weeks ago giving up. But I was like, no, I got to stick with it. Somebody might look for me. Somebody might want me one day. You know what I mean? And I truly believe that. And that's why I'm still here. Not because, you know what I mean, I want to get famous or I want some money or any of that. It's because I have faith and hope that somebody will, will be looking for me one day. You know what I mean? So that uh, my, my students know that, you know, my peers know that I preach this like no other. I preach the same story. You can look back to the 20 other podcasts that I've done. And I tell them the same thing. I tell them stick with it. Man, that's some great advice, man. I really, um, that, 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 hit, that hits uh, your heart right there because it's the truth. You know what I mean? The young bucks, they wanted to give up, man. And they stuck with it. What do you know? Now these guys are multimillionaires. You know what I mean? Like they're making it, they're doing their, like they work for the biggest company right now. You know what I mean? That's out, fresh company. So, you know, you can't just go, oh, it's not working for me. Nobody wants to book me. Yeah, months are slow, man. I've, I've dealt with months where I'm like, no one is trying to book me right now. I stuck, I'm going to quit. And then I go, nah, it's just a slow month. It's December. No one wants to spend money on wrestlers. Everybody's trying to save up money for their toys, for their kids and their husbands and their wives or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I understand. So, yeah, wrestling does this a lot, a lot. You know what I mean? And there's been times where I've, I broke my jaw twice. I dislocated both my shoulders. And I'm like, you know, I'm telling my family, that's it. I'm done. I'm never doing this. It cost me more financially to get everything fixed than I've made in this old business for 10 years. I'm done. <laughs> Next week, I'm like, I'm not done. All right, guys, I'll be back November, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, you're never truly done. You never truly retire as a wrestler because it's, it's always in you now. You know what I mean? So, there you go. Bad, man. That's some great advice. All right, Lou. This is you, man. It's your questions. Heck yeah, Lou. Go for Gino. it. Gino. Yes, yes. I'm listening. Can I have your autograph? May I have an autograph? What? <laughs> Say that again? Yes. Can I have your autograph? Absolutely. Here you go. Look. <laughs> <laughs> that's a virtual one for you yeah man yes the show, i'll get you something I'll, I'll, I'll send something to you no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding um <laughs> my first question is uh it's it's the day of the show you just got done doing your 
your uh, your thing on, on the ring. What are you eating after that match? How dare you ask me that? <laughs> so, um, guys, this is so bad, man. Uh, I'm I love In and Out, and I love Wendy's. So, um, you know what I mean. The, like, soon as I get out of the show, I'm like, "Where's the nearest Wendy's? Where's the near? I'm, I'm sorry. Where's the nearest In and Out?" And if we're not in the state where they have In and Out, which you guys probably wouldn't know about, In and Out is fantastic. Um, they only serve burgers and fries, but it's like this. It's the taste, man. Like it's unbelievable. And Texans always argue with people that in California that love In and Out. It's Whataburger versus In and Out, and I'll always choose In and Out over Whataburger. I'm sorry. But if that is not around, um, I definitely go to Wendy's and I get spicy chicken nuggets because I love spicy food and it fills me up and it's, it's cheap for wrestlers. You know, wrestlers, we got a budget, man. Sometimes we got to go, okay, I only made X amount of dollars. I got X amount of dollars in my bank and I got to weigh out what I'm going to buy. You know, a lot of guys will go to Waffle House and Denny's and spend $20 <laughs> on food. Good luck, dude. Um, I'm gonna go to you know to Wendy's and spend five bucks and get a variety, you know, and feel good about what I've I've eaten over twenty dollars. And you feel great about what you ate, but you're like, damn, I spent all that money. So think about that. <laughs> Other than that, if I'm in an area where I'm like, I love wrestling in the hood, okay, um, I will definitely grab me some wings or I will look for a Hawaiian barbecue anytime. So I mean, you got those four things: wings, Hawaiian barbecue, In and Out. Wendy's. All right, I got you. Uh, my next question is, what is the hardest you've been hit? Oh, my gosh. Uh, the hardest I've been hit was on 205 Live in February 2018 for the WWE. Um, I was working a match with Lindsay Dorado and Grand Metalik. They gave me a snapmare, which is like a, uh, they grab you by the neck, they front flip you over their shoulder, you land on your butt, and all of a sudden, both of them, kicked me one in the face and one in the back and mind you i broke my jaw twice already in the last 11 years now they did not hold anything back it was a snap mare boom i'm on my butt and all of a sudden bam i'm like oh. bam. <laughs> and i just remember myself looking at the lights because the lights are hot and they burn and they're super bright and almost disappeared because i didn't tan that day um what's they called um yeah just remember hearing that Boom, and I lay down, and I'm like, oh, I'm dead. You know what I mean? My mouth is broken. But, um, yeah, that was probably the hardest I've ever been hit. You know what I mean? Even breaking my jaw, when I broke my jaw, I heard that snap sound, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, like, that was the hardest I've ever been hit. No. That stiff kick, I think it was, gosh, I'm going to say Lindsay Dorado, who kicked me in the face, and then Grand Metalik, who kicked me in the back. Oh, gosh. It was just like one boom so i'll never forget that but they're told to lay it in you can't make that stuff look fake you can't we already deal with that right so you know what i mean we can't really just graze somebody you gotta you gotta let these fans that are in their arena actually see contact and boy did they ever but i love them for it lindsay dorado is one of my good friends and shout out to him and uh it was great you know what i mean i can't complain i love it one of the one of the best moments of my life, but also one of the most painful moments of my life. Okay. All right, my last question. We're going to get a little personal here. Um, what motivates you to continuously to improve in the ring? Seeing my friends get signed and um, everybody else passing me by. That's, uh, that's the one that hurts a little bit. Of course, um, you're happy to see your friends get signed and you're happy to see them come out and, oh, there's your buddy. And they didn't tell you that they're going to make their debut tonight or that they had a special spot, an extra spot. And all of a sudden you go, well, I've been wrestling longer than that guy. Or, you know, I might be a little better than that guy. Or I know more people than that guy to help me get there. And why is that guy there? And why am I at home watching him on TV or watching her on TV? That could have been me. <clears throat> and wrestling sparks this little professional jealousy, which is good at times because it's a motivator. You know what I mean? And I've dealt with a lot of that where I'm like, yeah, man. Hell yeah. I'm happy for my boy. Hell yeah. And then I go, but what about me? You know what I mean? What about Raven? I'm just kidding. But um, what about me? Like, what about, what about all the work I've done? What about all the sacrifice? And look, this is wrestling. 
And one thing my, one of my trainers always said is wrestling doesn't, can I cuss on this thing? Yes. Wrestling doesn't owe you shit. Okay. Um, no matter how many miles you put on the road, what it does to your body, what it's done to your pockets, how many shows you do wrestling doesn't owe you shit and you're entitled to anything. And I will always remember that. So when I do see my friends get signed and they're making their debuts, yeah, I got a little bit of jealousy and I'm like, darn, man, I wish that was me and I'm happy for them. But then I go, but wrestling doesn't owe you anything. So work harder, get better, get in better shape, get better gear, make your promos more crisp. You know what I mean? Uh, change your gimmick, change your hair, change your face, whatever it is, do better facials, get in your school, go training, go, you know, work out with some different people. There's so many things to do to, to make you stand out. And sometimes people lack that. And I've been guilty of that too. A lot of wrestlers do. And a lot of wrestlers don't want to admit that, but I have no problem with honesty. And I know what I have to improve. Like I have to improve uh, speaking Spanish. A lot of opportunities were supposed to be given to me. And um, sometimes people are like, well, can you speak fluent Spanish? Because what about media? And I'm like, Yikes, I can't do that. Or, you know, they're like, okay, you, you can wrestle, you can talk, you look good, blah, blah, blah. But uh, can you can you gain about 45 pounds? Can you gain about 50? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I already eat like a boatload. How am I supposed to do that? You know, and I've lost opportunities because of that. So I know what I need to do to, to, to get there. It's, you know, remaining motivated and, and constantly seeing my friends get signed that goes, you know what? damn it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to train tonight. I'm, I'm getting in the gym. I, I got to do this. I got to order new gear. I got to get boots. I got to come back, you know, with these promos a little hotter, you know, and stuff like that. So that, that is something that motivates me is the professional jealousy, which everyone has, you know what I mean? You could be a, a guy at McDonald's and the guy that's only been here for two weeks, you know, gets a promotion and you're like, wait, I've been on the fries for 10 years. What the hell? What do you mean? He's a, he's a manager. You know what I mean? It could be a, it could be a teacher. You know what I mean? That, Oh, you know, hey, uh, he's a sub. Why is he getting a job? And why is he getting more pay than I am? What the heck? I've been here for 30. It's, it's kind of like that. You know what I mean? You, you got to be honest with yourself and go, there's a reason why you're not signed in there. Or there, there's a reason why they're getting opportunities and you're not. So that is the motivation. Bet. Uh, that's it for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You mentioned out. We'll talk stories. We'll talk more stories after, after. Yeah, we'll... yeah. Tell all me, right. So tell anyway. me what I'm saying. Hey, stop me when I'm lying. Tell me what I'm saying when I'm like, when I say all these things, you don't feel that because it's legit. It's it's the truth. You know? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> I can't. We go. We go talk story after after. <laughs> 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 all right, man. So those are all the questions I've got for you. Those are all the questions that Lou's got for you. So we're going to get into it. It's time for the world famous 10 count questions. So here as it works, man. We're going to fire off 10 questions at you. It's going to be whatever's first thought to your mind. <laughs> Let's do it. I love these. <laughs> we're going to put the imaginary timer on the clock. Bing! Bing. And here yeah. we go. Raw or SmackDown? Raw. Eddie Guerrero or Rey Mysterio? Eddie. Jedi or Seth? Seth. All right. Friday night, what you doing? Friday night, um, spending time with my kids. Night Owl or Early Bird? I'm a night owl. Favorite movie? Favorite movie? Oh, my gosh. Um, any hood movie. I, I, I can't put one. Any hood movie. Friday, you know, Don't Be a Mess in South Central while drinking grape juice. That's me. Any hood movie. Favorite TV show? I love Full House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'm not even mad. Too hot or too cold? Uh, too hot. Nominate somebody that you would want on this podcast. I would say Peter Avalon, Famous B, Jungle Boy, those guys. You know what I mean? Those are the first people that pop in my head because they've got really interesting stories that, oh my God, only a few knew. They were amazing people. Yes. All right. Peter Avalon, AEW. We know that this episode right now is actually being recorded during your match with Brandon Cutler. We'll be reaching out to you. And Jungle yeah. Boy. I, I'm a huge fan of Jungle Boy. Trust me. I love and Jungle Boy. He's, he's, he's such a nice dude, bro. Nicest guy you've ever met. Like, Jungle Boy is just that dude. He's seriously, 
he has a heart of gold. So. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person that comes on this show, favorite curse word. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Too much too short, man. And, uh, you know, being in a locker room, just, you know, where everybody's just saying the F word or whatever. I love hearing the girl say it, the bitch word. You know what I mean? It makes, it does like, it, it makes me laugh because women say the word bitch differently than guys do. For us, if you don't know guys, we say bitch with like a heavy eye, like bitch, what's up bitch or whatever. And girls will say with an E, they'll say, she's such a bitch. And I'm like, what? Can you say that again? And they'll say it the same way. So we say bitch and they say batch. She's such a batch. Oh yeah, she's in the locker room. She's such a batch. And I'm like, can you say that again? Batch. I'm like, they, they don't know, they don't hear it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's funny to hear that word, but I love saying that word, you know what I mean? Cause too short, I love too short too. So, you know what I mean? And it's just, yep. it's, it's a funny word. I like saying it. Bet, bet, bet. <laughs> All right, man. Well, <laughs> those are all the questions that we have for you so do me a favor Gino tell our listeners and our viewers where they can find you you guys can find me on social media because I'm always on it from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter to TikTok to gosh YouTube all you have to do is type in Gino told you so told you so one word Gino one word Two words together, right? Gino space told you so. All one word. And you'll find me everywhere. Guys, if I had my space today, you'd find me there too. But obviously, that's not around. But you can check me out. And I'm on there all the time. I'm promoting my matches, my promos, promoting each other, my friends, my school. You can check me out there. Oh, speaking of schools, I have a school here in Albuquerque, New Mexico called Off the Ropes OTR become a professional wrestler today how bad do you want it right that's my little my little slogan treat yourself do not cheat yourself don't take the shortcuts take the long way you'll feel better about it you'll feel better inside you'll feel better about life you'll feel better about being a pro wrestler and with that you can come train with me gino rivera so with that being said find me on gino told you so on youtube instagram twitter facebook all of it and I am super fast with responses because my phone is glued to my chest the way, you know, it should be because I like answering everybody. And um, guys, I'm super, super interactive. So find me there. Bad. <clears throat> so this is the Three Count Presents Now Entering the Ring. And I am your host once again, Clifford Red Dog Miller, here with Luda Franchise. Now Entering the Ring. Gino Rivera, we will catch you guys next time. So tune into the next episode and be there or be somewhere else. Yeah. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod. Give us a like, give us a follow. Leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to YouTube.com. Give us a subscribe. Turn the bell on. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the Three Count Podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the Three Count Podcast also has merchandise oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our, our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So show us some support, please. <laughs>